I'm going to show you how to make some impressionistic strokes uh, on your uh, flower drawing. Now you can use whatever materials you have. So if you have colored pencils, you can use colored pencils. If you're going to use markers uh, with watercolor or straight up markers right onto the drawing or any uh, water, you know, any uh, liquid material, what you want to do is focus on doing two things. Number one, you're creating uh, an idea of what is the volume of what it is that you're looking at. Where are the high areas? Where are the low areas? And then the second thing is how does the light fall on the object? And when the light falls on the object, how does that impact the way that uh, the colors appear on the surface? So in this example, you can see when it's closer to the light, you can see some white, but you can see multiple variations of orange and even a little bit of green uh, in this uh, little orange. So if you're working with a pencil, um, you want to start by just exploring different types of marks, like you're not straight up and down, you're not trying to do a drawing, you're trying to give an idea of what's going on in this petal and what direction is it turning as it moves away from the center. So you can use some more scribbly lines if you like. Uh, you can blend some colors together and in blending the colors together it's going to uh, create a bit more range of color. Um, you will want to be thinking about shadows so maybe you're going to want to do darker marks around where the shadows are. You could even use some stippling which is like little dots of color uh, to give this a little bit of variation of color but a sense of the direction of where this is going in space. So that is with colored pencil. Now if you're coming in with wet material whether it be a marker, whether it be uh, watercolors or um, whatever it is that you're working with, you can once again when you're putting down your color think about the directionality. Where is this object turning? Uh, and it's sort of moving away from the center and going outward. So I'm going to come in there and I'll mix some colors together here to give a sense of what's going on here. And again, I'm doing very quick little gestural marks to try and give an idea of what's happening in this flower. And you can do a lot of blending with colors so you can um, mix it up a little bit. So that it's giving you a sense of like when we were looking, when you looked at that orange, that one color becomes many once you're adding the light. And so uh, you're just going to come in there and you are going to explore different types of gestural marks and various combinations of colors to tell the story of your flower. So I'm going to come in here and I want to get outside of the petal. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And notice that I can go right over the colored pencil too and sort of integrate that in. And, and another way you can also go with uh, in the opposite direction where you start with um, watercolor and then you're adding the um, colored pencil on top to bring out details. So really experiment with um, different types of lines as you're moving down uh, uh, and around your object and creating a combination of colors. If you are working with wet material, you can mix more than one color on the brush at the same time and that's going to give you a blended experience where the two colors are coming together. Um, and you can just move right along until you get what it is that you are looking at, what you want to communicate. So uh, you can use some outlining with different colors to sort of accentuate the difference between the petals, the shadows as it goes away, um, and maybe put a little more dark in the center. But really play with your brush strokes so that you can 
have a more um, expressive um, rendering of your flower. And now I'm going to come in and I want to bring in a slightly darker color and I'm going to come and add some more information. So it's playing with the mark making. So have fun with it. It's really fun to just come in there and be liberated and have a good time just trying to experiment with your mark making but also tell the story of what it is that you're looking at now once this dries I could then if I wanted to go back in it and add some um, colored pencils I could add some washes of color over the top but um, it's up to you what you want to do with it I'm gonna put a little shadow around here to show that the flower is in front um, but just experiment with those different brush strokes because it's kind of fun uh, and um, do your best to uh, express the flower that you're looking at now it might be helpful also to uh, actually look at a photograph um, to get some color reference if you want to and a photograph because it's flat you're going to be able to clearly see those highlights and those shadows uh, and I want to just come in and do one last thing and then come in here and bring a darker color to get that area of the the flower sort of turning in here. And I'm going to come in here, put that there, and get my lines out here. Too. And come in and have fun really just playing with your marks and telling the story of your flower. Um, and you don't necessarily always have to be so straightforward with the colors that you're using. You could be more expressive and add, um, you know, some different colors. But whether you're using markers or watercolors, what I recommend is that you use less water. Because you can see how that sort of like moved around a little bit more. Uh, use less water and less water will allow you more definition when you're going in and working into your drawing. So that is that. Create your wonderful expressive drawing and then you will turn that in uh, to the assignment. All right.